Hi, I'm Katie. I'm a Power Up Dietitian with Health Partners, and I'm also a mom who knows how fun and sometimes challenging it can be to get kids in the kitchen. Yet we know when we get kids in the kitchen and give them an opportunity to touch and see and experience new foods, they are curious and naturally excited to try. This is the foundation for a lifetime of better eating, and I've seen it work time and time again with kids and families in cooking classes and in my own home. And Power Up is here to make that happen. Power Up is an initiative that helps kids and families eat better, move more, and grow up healthy. You can check us out on the web at powerup4kids.org for more information, resources like a recipe gallery, activities, and more. We couldn't do this work without partners like Cooks of Crocus Hill who are just as excited about making delicious food fun and easy to make. They have been a Power Up partner since the very beginning. And today we're going on a cooking adventure with Chef Tracy. So let's get started with fun, fruit and veggie filled, kid approved recipes. Today we are making sweet potatoes three ways. It's a great root vegetable that pairs well in so many meals and we're happy to get you started with these three simple recipes. We've gathered up all of our ingredients here for our sweet potato hash. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques with some of the items we're prepping. Um, to prepare our kale for our hash, I'm going to be stripping our leaves here off of the stem. So I'm just going to grab the base of the, of the stem here and just pull back to remove that stem. Do it again with this one here. Just pull and remove the stem. And then I'm just going to tear this up with my hands so that I have some nice bite-sized pieces for our hash. Another technique I'd like to show you, and you might need help from an adult, is we're going to grate our sweet potato with our box grater. So you can either dice your sweet potato or you can use the, uh, the box grater here. And to do that is we're going to take a piece of our sweet potato here Keep our box grater nice and sturdy on our board and, and just grate, pushing that sweet potato down towards our cutting board. We have a nice amount there. I'm just going to go ahead and move it aside on our board. So this recipe calls for the use of bell peppers. The great thing about bell peppers and why we love them is they come in lots of different colors. They're juicy and sweet and give kids an experience for lots of senses. One thing to ask your kids before you get started is just what do you think these are going to taste like? Do you think they're going to be spicy or sweet or juicy or sour? You could have even a little card for them to fill out and check certain boxes for a taste test. Um, if you have a child who might be a little more nervous about peppers, just because the idea of a pepper is usually paired with the idea of hot, definitely remind them that bell peppers are sweet and they come in lots of colors. So while Tracy might use one color in the recipe today, you can use whatever color is available to you. And if for some reason you can't get your hands on a bell pepper, that's okay. You can omit it. This recipe is very flexible. So we're going to get started cooking our sweet potato hash here in a saute pan here. I'm going to get it going at a low to medium heat. And as that warm, warms up here, I'm just going to take a look at my uh, prep here to ensure I have all the things that I need. So I have my oil, my spices, um, I have some onion and kale, my bell pepper, my eggs, my green onion, and my sweet potato. So to start, we're going to add to our pan a tablespoon of oil. We're going to add our onion, and we also want to add our bell pepper. And we're gonna use a green bell pepper today. This around. We wanna, our goal here is to soften our onions and bell pepper. This, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our sweet potato. We're using some diced sweet potato, but you can also use some shredded sweet potato here as well. I'm going to add some cumin, some garlic, and some paprika. Another quick stir. Make sure those spices are nicely combined with our 
vegetables. Once it's all well combined, I'm going to put the lid right on top of our hash. And let that cook for about 10 minutes. All right. Our sweet potato is nice and we've cooked here. We do have some nice browning that has happened. So now what we want to do is we want to add in our chopped kale. And we want to wilt that kale. Make some space for our eggs. So to crack our eggs, we're going to um, just crack on a flat surface here, like so, and drop our egg right in the middle of those wells we created. And now to just uh, finish cooking our eggs, we're going to want to trap some steam on our dish, so we're going to just place our lid right over the top again. Allow those eggs to finish cooking. Okay, so. We've finished up cooking our eggs here. They're nice and steamed. So to finish our dish up, we're going to add some sliced green onions. We're going to season with a little bit of salt, just a sprinkle, and a couple turns of my pepper grinder. We're ready to taste our hash. Next, we're going to make baked sweet potatoes. Baking is a great option for sweet potatoes to get some great flavor and a great texture. But if you're short on time, I have another method that I wanna tell you about that's really quick and easy. So when you're getting your potato ready for the microwave, it's really important to stab it all over eight to 10 times with a fork or a sharp knife, just all along the side and kind of rotate it and all along the next side and rotate it. Um, so you kind of get holes all over. Next, what you want to do is wrap it in a damp paper towel, put it on a, mic on a microwave safe plate, and put it in the microwave for two minutes and 30 seconds on one side. Once that's done, you just flip it over to the other side for another two minutes and 30 seconds. Let it cool a little bit so it's safe to touch after uh, you pull it out, and then cut it open, mash away, and you're set to go. Before we start working on our baked sweet potatoes, we're going to put our sweet potatoes under some running water and give them a nice good scrub with our hands. We have our nicely scrubbed sweet potatoes here that we want to bake, but before we can get them in our oven, we need to pierce them with a, with a fork, like so. And I want to go all the way around my sweet potato. And what this does is it allows for that heat to penetrate our sweet potato and so that it promotes even nice cooking. All right, so then what we wanna do is we wanna line a sheet pan with some aluminum foil. We'll get our sweet potatoes on there and they go right, they go right in the oven. We have our sweet potatoes here that we're gonna put in our oven to bake at 425 degrees. We have our lovely baked sweet potato here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the top of the sweet potato so that we could get to that yummy sweet potato on the inside. The skin should be uh, pliable enough to go ahead and just peel it back off of the sweet potato like so. And then I'm gonna take my sweet potato and just put it on my plate. And then with a fork, I'm going to go ahead and mash my sweet potato. So start with the end because it'll be a lot softer. And you can season it with whatever you'd like. But today what we'll use is a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe just a small tab of butter. Ready to go. While a sweet potato wedge might be a new food, and unfamiliar for your kids or even yourself, what helps increase acceptance is pairing it with a familiar food. And that might be something like ketchup or a dipping sauce that you really love in your family. So you've got something that you know really well and love, 
paired with something that is interesting, probably delicious, but you're not quite sure, and it can be a great way to introduce a new food. So today we're gonna work on our roasted potato wedges. So we have our sweet potatoes, we have our oil, we have our chili powder, our salt and pepper. If you don't have any chili powder, please feel free to use whatever favorite spice you have in your cupboard. Um, so to start, we have our scrubbed and washed sweet potatoes here. We're gonna go ahead and cut this guy in half to start. When you're roasting any vegetable, but sweet potatoes in particular, a little seasoning goes a long way. And what I mean by that is even if you just use salt with some oil, toss that um, on your sweet potato, it can really accentuate the flavor. But you don't need anything extra if you don't want to. Right in our bowl they go. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil, two tablespoons to be exact. We'll do some salt. Couple turns of my pepper grinder here. One, two, that's always fun. And today I am using some chili powder. Get my hands in there and give them a good shake, like so. Make sure all those spices are really evenly combined so that every bite is delicious. I have a sheet pan here with a piece of parchment paper. We'll add these on. Spread them really nice and evenly so that it can all cook pretty evenly here once it's all in the oven. We have our sweet potatoes here that we're gonna uh, roast, our sweet potato wedges. We're gonna put these in the oven at 450 degrees. With a hot pad, make sure to be careful because it will be very hot. And these are ready and beautiful. Thanks for joining me on this food adventure. We look forward to cooking again with you soon.